Angelica, I'll just hit record now. And over to you. Perfect. So, uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'll share this presentation uh, to start with. And if you could confirm for me, Richard, is everything working as intended from your side? Um, I think so. It's been recorded now, so everything should be perfect to go ahead. Yeah, you can see the slides and it seems to be okay, yeah? Um, I can see that they're, they're, I'm not sure what anybody else can see. My um, connections dropped slightly here. Um, I can see your poll, but not your content. Okay. That's your content now. Uh, yeah, that's it up now. It's, it's loaded now. It's, it's coming like, up now? Yeah, my, my, just my slow connection, I think. Thank you for the confirmation. So, hi everyone. Uh, thanks a million for joining us today. And thanks, Richard, and all the uh, uh, ALSIC uh, interest group as well for inviting me to present today. Um, my name is Angelica Risquez from the Center for Transformative Learning at UL. And when um, we were invited to present in this webinar series. I just thought of what could be perhaps of value for many of you here who perhaps could be educational developers like myself, uh, but perhaps some of you are also academics that are interested to learn more of this approach. In any case, I hope that this session of, uh, of today is of value. So what I would like to cover today is um, just explore the ABC learning design framework as a planning tool and to present a, a choice of a collaborative tool for your consideration, perhaps if you are planning to run such similar sessions in your institution. Uh, the, um, the first thing I would like to do is to hear a little bit from you. And to that effect, I have prepared a little uh, poll that I hope that will work. So if I, uh, is that poll coming up for you? You may want to say yes i can see it it's coming up so you may want to let me know um and i'm not very familiar with this tool at all uh, richard so uh, i'm not 100 percent sure how i can see the results <laughs> i had a mental yeah, exercise working. a minute ago it's working it's fine. coming and it's I'll coming keep an up. Eye on it. thank you very much so you may let me know richard what are the results coming up and that will give us a uh, a sense of the audience uh, this afternoon so just perhaps to let us know uh, to what extent you have experience with ABC. Maybe you just come in today to get um, just a brief introduction. Or on the other extreme, you may be pretty much uh, an expert and have delivered it yourselves in your institutions. So just would like uh, love to hear from you all. So again, yeah. We've got 14 waiting for. Hmm, okay. I'll share the responses when, when you want to move on so everybody can see, sure. You just let me know thanks when you million. want to. Yeah, super. Thanks Thanks for that, uh, Richard. And so you may you may let us know perhaps what's coming up for the time being. Oh, yeah, it's coming up here now. Super, thanks. So um, most of you would have heard something about it, and some of you have attended a uh, workshop as a participant. And a number of you, three of you, have also run ABC workshops as a facilitator. So you're very welcome to join towards the end of the discussion as well to contribute your experience. And that would be great. I have some sense of relief, I must confess, on knowing that nobody here is an expert or even has created the framework because. Um, that it was a bit of a fear of mine. Uh, but in any case, I hope that uh, this brief session is of value for, for everyone. So before I proceed, I would like to acknowledge that the work that I'm going to present here is very much the collaborative effort from my colleagues on CDL in, in UL, uh, Dr. Idel Sullivan and David Moloney, who've worked an awful lot uh, we on developing our approach to ABC, uh, this learning design at UL, and and um, and uh, it's been great, really. And we delivered the workshops in collaboration, and it's an iterative process. And we keep learning, we keep learning together. So that being said, um, you for those of you that are have never heard of ABC, uh, just to get a want to get a very brief introduction. 
the ABC Learning Design uh, was developed in University College London as a structure and fast process for those involved in model, the module design and delivery. It's, uh, it's meant to be a student-centered approach based on Laurie Dirt's conversational framework and, and uh, the, the way that is, uh, if you want, uh, sold uh, to those academics come to do some curriculum development work is that is uh, fast, it requires minimum preparation, it stimulates dialogue between team members, and it's, uh, it's meant to, to encourage blended approaches, face-to-face -face and online approaches. And there's a growing community of practice that, um, that have adopted the ABC Learning Design. Uh, we are pretty much late commerce into this community of practice. We, for years, and I have the cards here, uh, that I keep uh, with, um, uh, we keep in, in my treasure chest in the office. Uh, we have the viewpoints by University of Ulster, and that's how I got to meet Richard in the first place. So I used those ones for a number of years, and I keep reusing them. So they're very much they're very much used and marked and everything. And then later on, we moved to the uh, printed ABC learning design materials that are somewhat. Uh, 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 a development from from that, I suppose, there were lots of overlaps, and uh, obviously the ABC um, Learning Design community. It's uh, if you don't know the website, we can point it towards the end. It's a wealth of information and sharing resources very openly, and it's absolutely fantastic to work with those materials. And we used to do that face to face for a while. I also would like to mention our colleagues in uh, Dublin City University who've also been very active at promoting in Ireland uh, the ABC um, to VLA based on an, an Erasmus Plus project to promoting the ABC approach and uh, our colleague uh, Claire Gromley was very good to come to us initially and deliver the first ABC session and we developed it from the approach from there. So um, as I said, we are kind of we came into this, joined this community, and if you want to learn more about the process, I won't play the video, but it would explain uh, the analogy that's explained here, the um, the learning types in which ABC is based, six learning types, and there's six type of uh, cards, six colors for each of those learning types, and the principle of that is that. When you are working in a face-to-face -face environment, you play with the cards, you work in a timeline, and then you can flip each of the cards and to the back of the cards, you will find suggestions for activities, both in the conventional face-to-face -face environment and also uh, some digital alternatives. So that is the, the idea, the first learning type being acquisition, just read, listen, watch, my, uh, resources, also collaboration where students have to produce uh, something together through discussion, discussion uh, as well, and investigation uh, for independent learning, uh, practice, which is sometimes associated as well to learning ta to assessment tasks. So anything that um, that implies the learning through practice enables the learning to to adapt their tasks towards the goal and so on and finally the final learning type is production i'm conscious that our time is tight so i don't want to, to uh, linger too, too much in each of these six learning types in any case if you want to learn more about those again the material is widely available on the abc learning design uh, main website so like, the idea is that towards the end of it you uh, could have a compilation of learning activities and of, like, of student activities in each of these six learning types, and you can actually align this to formative and summative assessment. Some of those activities will contribute to assessment, some of them won't, and, and uh, that's the comprehensive picture that emerges. The way that uh, we have run this online for obvious reasons, um, Obviously, when COVID came, we couldn't sit around the table and use any printouts and whatever. So things moved online, and um, the way that it worked for us, we first put in the workshops, uh, invite people to think of a module they want to work with as a team, and to draw uh, a shape in terms of what the module looks like at the moment before redevelopment. On the second part, we do some storyboarding exercise. Uh, so I'll explain that in a bit more detail in, in a minute or so. And finally, we do revisit what the module is looking like after the redesign. 
So again, we invite people and teams to decide on a module they want to work with as a group and to come up with a learn module shape. We use a little um, uh, open uh, OER um, by, shared by the community uh, based on an Excel spreadsheet. And usually the work that we work, if we work in breakout rooms with groups of five or six, and one of us would be the facilitator. We do a screen share and we manage these documents. So we work with this Excel spreadsheet and we say, okay, what is your module looking like at the moment? What percentage of your students' time is devoted in each of the six learning types? So how long do you usually spend an acquisition? How long do you spend collaboration? How long do you spend discussion? And so on. You just pop in a number from zero to 10 and as your zero to 100, whatever you want. And as you do that, a shape starts to emerge. And that is the shape of the module as it is at the moment. Sometimes a bit of reflection follows from that. People say, stand back and say, okay, there's too much acquisition here. And that's not quite goes with the learning outcomes of the module. Therefore, we want to invest more in collaboration or discussion or whatever it may be. Um, so that's the kind of first part of the conversation and the starter of the conversation. And then what we do next is to spend a um, nice a bit of time. I suggested there 30 minutes, but actually with time we've been expanding this. And in the last iteration, we spent a whole 50 minutes on this part, uh, storyboarding the, the new design, basically. So usually we aim to uh, design um, a, mod a new a module for deliveries, for example, next semester, and we go as far as designing weeks one and two, perhaps, and also to align some assessment. So what activities of that, maybe starting to contribute to assessment, 5% for any activity, whatever it may be. Um, that's what we've done. So for those of you that are have delivered ABC learning design or have attended workshops, uh, the way that this has been done online in each institution has been different and I've seen every kind of tool being used to really uh, loads of um, a Padlet like um, Miro, uh, there's people using Jamboard, uh, there's uh, examples of people um, using even in Excel spreadsheet, even uh, Google uh, Slides uh, uh, collaborative doc where everyone is contributing in a different slide to do a little bit of top level storyboarding. And so the possibilities are endless. When we decided on a tool to go for, for the RABC learning design workshops, we were mindful of uh, the need or our preference for using a support, a, a, a tool that is supported institutionally in our institution to start with. And on that basis, we decided to use MS Planner and we, I, have, I haven't come across any other institution that went that direction. So hopefully in that sense, this workshop will uh, provide something that is new to you in that sense. So we went for MS Planner because it's integrated on the uh, supported office suite in the institution and is linked to a, any other tool. And we also decided to go for MS Planner because it allows this collaborative element that we couldn't get uh, with some of the other tools. Um, so with MS Planner, what we do is working with a template. So David did an awful lot of work on creating an initial template where we explain the ABC storyboarding process and we present each of the learning types. And then uh, there is a sample column where you have each of the learning types. And for each of the learning types, um, you can select a lot of information. So these are the instructions I provide. We just invite them to discuss the module little outcomes, to type in some initial information, and then um, we ask them to map the learning type cards across the storyboard, perhaps week one and two again. So top level um, learning types. And then once they've done that, we invite them to, if you want, flip the card virtually speaking and just to start ticking all the options that we want to use for learning types so they just can uh, add as well uh, additional information and um, the beauty of this approach is that they it also links to the rest of the um 
suite on tool uh, suite of tools that uh, we have in MS Office. So, for example, it can link to all uh, to a collaborative space in a, a, in the likes of a SharePoint and draw drag documentation from there. So the idea with a using MS Planner is that it's a tool that can keep being developed. Uh, coming from that template, uh, some teams have evolved this and created very comprehensive storyboards where they include a lot of information, lots of links to documentation, and then it's just a matter to translate that into the VLE afterwards. So I suppose that uh, that's what we've done in breakout rooms and and uh, it's worked well, uh, reasonably well for us in Old Furnace uh, in a number of iterations uh, in this way. And what we do afterwards is just to debrief for 10 minutes or so on how the experience went once we come back to the main room, how it went for people and some useful insightful comments usually come up there in in how things are emerging i suppose from that initial exercise it's quite dynamic and but very much idea is that it's a kind of starting point for people to continue afterwards so we review we review those graphs we can revisit that excel spreadsheet and do the after the before and after and say okay what has changed and why so how is this effectively like you will get if you do this two overlapping overlapping graphs so the second one will tell you okay are you actually now doing more collaboration and discussion as you intended to are you are you allocating student time towards that or not and and uh, it is interesting discussion we've also followed the um i suppose model uh, by uh, our colleagues in bcu in creating an infographic of all the uh, supported tools in our institution and uh, so we've uh, included here tools from the VLE and also from the office environment and uh, some other um, integrations uh, in order to provide an infographic for people to uh, do follow-up investigation of the tools that will support each of the learning activities that they've included on, the, on their storyboards. So after the workshop, it's up to the teams to um, follow, up, follow up on the work. Uh, to continue the process after the webinar and we provide them with further instructions on using MS Planner, but we also provide them with alternatives. Okay, if if it if it comes, if it's like a too much of a complex tool to use for them, we've also provided alternatives to um, to you to storyboard, for example, in PowerPoint, providing uh, we provided them with a template in PowerPoint with the cards and the back of the cards, and they just can click and drag and drop in a timeline. Or we even invite people just to come back to the opinion paper if that's what people are happy with. And th that works better for some people as well. But I suppose they lose on that level of granular detail and links and making it a live collaborative resource as you can actually enable an MS Planner. So I suppose that's worked well with us. It's for those of you that are interested in running an ABC Learning Design Workshop, I can make these slides available and this is a rough indication of the timings that uh, we've used as well to run the, the workshop. But um, I, suppose it's, uh, I suppose I'd like just to conclude the presentation um, with, um, with the latest development and the feedback from the, the participants uh, has been a bit mixed as well in terms of MS Planner, use MS Planner as a tool because some of them really uh, it grew into, the, into them and some of them stated that they will see themselves doing all their future curriculum design using MS Planner, using that template and using it as a tool, colla even collaborating with other team members in order to co-develop um, that process and uh, some others found it just too cumbersome too much. So there's a lot of, uh, there's an element of information overload when they start, there's a lot of information there to be filled and it can be perhaps too much too soon. So that encourages us to take a step back and look for a simpler alternative to get people started in the, in the journey. And the latest iteration of the ABC, ABC workshop, we uh, used uh, the Learning Designer, which many of you may know. It's the tool that UCL uh, created and uh, made available 
for the community and the beauty of it is that it will potentially allow you to share a design with others and there's also a, a library of of um thanks for anya for providing the link there the there's a library of uh of uh, other designs that you can potentially look at in your discipline and, and draw inspiration from so uh, we decided on using the learning designer uh, because of a level of, I suppose, uh, simplicity. We provided them with a template that it kind of replicates the previous template we had with a description of the ABC storyboarding process, then some sample activities for each of the learning types and an example week. And with that, they, they began to develop it from, from there. And it's in the learning designer. If you haven't seen it, you can create a free account. And it's basically a, just a matter of adding each learning activity and popping in the duration the group size, if the teacher is present or not, if the activity is online or offline, synchronous or asynchronous, and you can also link to resources, but you cannot store resources as part of it, so you can only point to where the resources live on your computer. So in that sense, it's not as, um, as feature-rich and integrated as we had with uh, MS Planner that allowed you to add attachments and everything else. But it has worked well. Something that people really liked from the um, from the session that we run recently using Learning Designer is the pie chart that emerges. As you start adding uh, learning activities and you add the times, then this uh, distribution of the uh, learning activities uh, starts emerging in that pie chart. People like to see that emerging uh, dynamically as they work with the with the with the design, and that's a nice feature. And just to finish on a on a, a, a good humor note here, um, I suppose and a reflection is this balance between using support and unsupported tools. Um, so the there is an element of uh, risk if you want involved in inviting people. To, and I see the labs coming there. Uh, there's an element of risk involved in inviting people to create an account externally with a tool that we haven't designed, that is not living in our servers, and that uh, we have to put all the privacy um, notices around us and say, and just tell them it's very much their choice if they decide to go that direction. And if there was something technical to happen with that, there's nothing that we can really do about it. So that is the, that element, I suppose, of trust that goes away with using a tool that is external as well. And um, but it's one that I think it's it's this kind of it's been I think in my view kind of is worth it, and well it's great really to 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 use it's a great tool to use and, and very reliable. So I think that's my time up. Sorry that it's been a bit little bit rushed, uh, but I'm just very conscious of leaving that time for a conversation emerging. So thanks for your attention and looking forward to the discussion. Thanks, Angelica. That was that was very interesting. Um, can we open it up for questions? I'm going to stop the recording now so the questions